It's Entomology Animated, celebrating the amazing biology of insects using the power of digital animation. Ding. Hi, this is Eric Keller for Entomology Animated, and in this video I'm going to continue my series on uh, modeling the rainbow scarab beetle, which you see right here in Maya with wireframe and shaded turned on. So I've already prepped this for uh, texturing. I'm just going to kind of show you the basic uh, approach that I took in this video. Um, it's a very tedious process. The sculpting part is a lot of fun. Prepping for texturing and doing the technical stuff is much less fun um, and it's pretty dry stuff. So I'm just going to kind of go through this quickly. So let's first talk about my goal with this model. So what I've decided is that I want to rig this model for animation and I want to render it in uh, Octane for Maya. Um, as opposed to making a game ready model. So if this was something that I was going to do for a real time game engine such as Unreal, I would have this at a lower uh, subdivision. So this is what I, the lowest subdivision level that I've uh, exported out of ZBrush. So this is too many polygons for games, but it should work pretty well rendering for Octane and also rigging, it shouldn't be too bad. Um, the first thing that I did that took a long time was a uh, retopology of the model. And I kind of did this, you know, while I was working in ZBrush. So kind of going back and forth between sculpting and retopology. And I believe I've covered it more in a previous um, chapter uh, in this series. But just to do a very quick um, glimpse of what the process is like, I'm going to go to an older version here. Let's save this real quick. And yeah, this this one shows pretty good. So this is what I exported out of ZBrush. This was in a Dynamesh phase. So you can see how nasty the topology is. This is fine for sculpting, but not great for uh, rigging. Um, so I would export this from ZBrush. This is part of the mouth parts. And I would um, make it live by clicking on this magnet button here. So it's now live. And you can see that I actually have this poly surface right here. Another thing that I like to do, I'll select that, go into the modeling toolkit and choose X-ray on so that you can see through it. Now you can see that this is part of the retopology in progress. I'm doing it fairly low polygon, uh, but I'm using quad draw, which means um, uh, I have this transform constraint set to live surface. Then with the, this selected, I'll choose quad draw and then go in here and literally it's like a long connect the dots kind of exercise where I just add one polygon at a time. And it is a painstaking process, but it's more accurate than using a Z remesher. And the advantage is, is that I have more control over where I put edge loops. So I always try and make sure that there are edge loops that follow the major contours. Not only does this help to preserve the form uh, and allow you to easily add edge loops where you need them. It also makes it easier to break it up when I do UV shells. So I did that for every single part of the model and um, for each of those I imported them back into ZBrush. So when you're importing a surface back into ZBrush what you would do is you would take the sub tool. Let's do the same one. I'm going to turn on solo and um, I can import the OBJ file as another sub tool and then use projection to project the high res detail from one surface to the another, even if their topology doesn't perfectly match. Uh, so that's the basic idea. And I did that again for each and every subtool. It did take a long time, but it's really worth it. So let's go back to the um, latest version. And then what I did is um, I made sure that I had names for all my surfaces. Now these names are kind of temporary holding place names. Um, I do want to make sure that eventually when I get to the point of rigging that my names are accurate based on the anatomy of the beetle because I do have things that are kind of temp names in here. Things like, you know, abdomen bottom and uh, uh, let me see mouth one and mouth two. So those are all temporary names. So I have my names and then I um, brought all of these into ZBrush so that the names of my subtools match the names in Maya. Even if it's somewhat disorganized, at least I, I'm not confused. Um, and if I, I re-export or change something in ZBrush and re-export it to Maya or vice versa, I can keep things nice and organized. Um, I'm not going to worry about the final names just yet because a lot of these surfaces I'm going to break into smaller objects, like the legs here for instance. This is currently one object. Um, eventually I'm going to break it into other ones. So I'm not going to bother going through and fixing all the names now. When I, I'm going to do that before I do the rigging. 
So I've retopologized. I've organized the model. Um, I fixed a couple things. For instance, the elytra right here. Previously, in a previous version, I had it kind of the edge here, kind of straight across, and there's too much distance here. So after looking at the model again, or looking at the specimen again, I've seen that there is kind of a curve here that follows this part. So I've got that in there. The one major part of the anatomy that I do not have in this model is the wings. Right now I have a lot of empty space. I'm gonna save that for a later date because I think that's gonna be kind of a huge challenge and I wanna tackle that later on. The, the wings fold up in a specific way and that's something I really have to study before I start modeling the wings. But that'll come at a later time. Right now this guy would be good enough for pushing around balls of poo because he is a dung beetle and that's what dung beetles do. Okay, so retopology, organization, the next thing is UVs. So if I select all the surfaces and open up the UV editor, I've taken um, great pains to organize my UVs. And as you can see, I have these set up as UDIMs. So this is the 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. I set this up for UDIMs because I do wanna have um, a lot of texture space devoted to this this model because I want it to look really nice in the final render. Um, so I'm going to be texturing this in substance, which supports UDIMs, and uh, I'm going to be rendering this in Octane for Maya. Octane 4 for Maya does now actually support UDIMs, which is very exciting. It makes it a lot easier to set up the textures and render. So I'm going to get excited about uh, doing that part of the process later on. But UV um, editing is not a whole lot of fun, but it's really important if you have good UVs. You know, good UVs will make or break your model. If you have terrible UVs, it's going to be nearly impossible to create good textures. I do want to make sure that I don't have any overlap here between UV shells and that um, I don't have any of the UV shells that are um, moving over into other texture space or right here on the border. So for instance, if I, I'm going to turn on my checker for a pattern here and just select my abdomen. So you can see there's the checker pattern on the abdomen. So that's what the UVs look like. Um, so this UV shell, for instance, was a little bit too far over. You can see how this checkerboard pattern comes on in the adjacent UDIM. dim. Um, it's good to check these and double and make sure, especially if you're using a lot of automatic layout in uh, Maya's UV editor, uh, because even just a little bit will cause big problems if you're creating uh, displacement maps in ZBrush and also can cause problems with your texturing later on. So I want to make sure that my UVs are nice and neat. Now, if you're wondering where you can get more information on how uh, to lay out UVs in uh, Maya 2018, well, I have very good news for you. I have a video series on this subject at the Noman Workshop, which you can check out. Um, it's a nice long lecture, a, very, a variety of approaches to laying out UVs in Maya 2018. It's the CG equivalent of doing your taxes. It's no fun, but it's important to do. So you can watch this series on the Nomen Workshop. Let's see, I have a whole lot of chapters, something like 20 chapters. Good stuff. So once I have uh, the UVs laid out, I've actually grouped the model according to how the UDENs are set up. So I have a group here for 1001, a group for 1002, 1003, 1004, 10, 11, 10, 12, 10, 13, 10, 14, uh, 10, 21, 10, 22, 10, 23. So a lot of UDIMs there. And um, in some cases, it's just a single object taking up the entire texture space like uh, the pronotum here. And this is important because there's so much detail in here and the texture is so important that I wanted to make sure that I had as much texture space as possible. So that's what the UVs look like. And they're not too stretched or warped. You can see that I have less texture space here on the inside because honestly, I don't think we're gonna see that as much. So I really wanted to prioritize this part right here, the exposed part. Uh, kind of same thing with the head. So the head um, is entirely within the uh, 1002 space. So the logic behind grouping these 
is that when I'm in Substance painting them, um, Substance Painter will group the objects based on um, their UDEMs. So I can hide or show various objects while I'm painting based on the UDEMs. So that means I want to, like, I don't want to have parts of the leg and, and parts of the wing and parts of the abdomen all within one UDEM because it's going to make it harder to paint. But if I organize this, as to all the parts that I want to paint together, say for instance the mouth parts. Um, there we go. Mouth parts or the legs are all uh, one UDEM here. Sorry, that's the inside. That's some random bits. But here's some leg leg pieces right here. So this is all within one group and within. Now that took a fair amount of time and uh, again, very labor intensive. Once I was finished with that, I imported these, uh, the low poly versions of the model into the lowest subdivision in ZBrush, just to make sure that um, everything matches in terms of the EVs, the names and everything. So everything in, in ZBrush mirrors everything in Maya. Um, but I also have my low resolution details and my high resolution details. So the LAPD is flying a helicopter around my studio. So if you hear that buzzing in the background, that's what it is. I'm sure they're not looking for me unless I've made some really serious anatomical errors in the beetle. In that case, they might come and talk to me. Um, okay, so once I import, to import UVs into ZBrush, what you want to do is go to the lowest subdivision level of the surface. Make sure you store a morph target so you get down here. Store a morph target. Once you store a morph target with it selected, you can go in here and choose import, uh, find that part of the model. I have it in my export folder, so it would be you know, front legs or whatever. So right here, and then import it. And it should import the UVs without affecting the um, without affecting the details in the highest subdivision level. Uh, that's why you store the morph target to protect that. So I do that for each subtool. Again, very laborious process. As I do it, um, I go down here to the um, texture map section and I press create new from UV map. And that creates this kind of rainbow texture. So I know that I've got UVs on all my model and they all work and they're all compliant with um, what I have in Maya because each one of these guys has a, uh, a texture map associated with it. So I'm going here and just turn these all on so you can kind of see what I mean. So as I'm going through here, importing UVs, I keep doing that so that makes it easy to remember what I've got UVs for and what I have yet to import. So you can kind of see that's what it looks like. So eventually all the surfaces have this rainbow texture on it. Okay, so not the most uh, gripping uh, video in the series, but it is important stuff and neatness counts, organization counts, all of those things make your life a lot easier. I do eventually have to fix the model because if I turn on the grid, you can see I modeled it along the wrong axis. Probably because I started with a sphere, I should have this you know, on the ground instead of facing up and down. I'm gonna fix that once I rig the model. I'm gonna try and keep everything as consistent as possible between Maya and ZBrush up until the point where I have the textures done. So the next uh, thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make some displacement maps for the uh, surface here in ZBrush using uh, Multimap Exporter. I'll talk about that in the next video. And I'm also going to talk about how I go about baking uh, the details um, into textures, into normal maps using Substance Painter. And it basically involves exporting the high res parts of the model and the low res parts of the model, bringing them both into uh, substance painter and baking the texture maps and then I can use them in substance as a guide so because of the way that I set up this model I have a kind of a specific way of going about doing that so we'll talk about that in the next video